Hey everybody, it's RC. A little late night Photoshop session here. So we have Adobe Lightroom 1.1 and I wanted to spend some time talking a little bit about a cool new feature that we wound up having here, specifically the sharpening. Now, I took this picture at my friend Bonnie's wedding and this is of little Jaina. I wanna go ahead and I wanna take this image and I want to be able to get it over to Bonnie as soon as possible. But there's a couple of things in here that are beginning to bug me and I wanna start just kind of correct it very, very quickly. So let's go ahead and jump in. First thing that's bugging me is the color. There's a little bit of a blue cast here on the white area by the gloves. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my blue on the color and I'm just going to desaturate that just a tiny bit. All right, we don't lose too much. That looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and drop that. I'm going to zoom into one to one. I'll go ahead and I'll use my spot removal tool and get rid of that spot and that spot, maybe even that spot. And for that artistic effect, let's go ahead and go to lens corrections and I'm going to go ahead and drop my vignetting, add some intentional vignetting on the edges. Actually, oh, let's just add a lot and then I'll drag my midpoint down even further so that I can get more of that spotlightish effect. Okay, I'm liking this. However, there's one thing that I'm not liking. If I click, I'm not going to actually click in there. I'll show you what it is that I'm not liking. I'm going to go to the detail. In Lightroom 1.1, now we wind up having amount, radius, detail, and masking. Before, when we had to do any kind of sharpening in 1.0, we only had two sliders. But now we have a lot more control over what we wind up doing to this image. Now. Notice immediately when we wind up going in here, you have this little warning icon on the upper left hand corner. It tells you a zoom level of one to one is required to be able to see these effects. So I've got to get to one to one. Now I can click on the image itself to get to my one to one, or I can just click on that little warning icon. Automatically zooms me into one to one. Now notice the eyes, a little cloudy, a little out of focus. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some sharpening into this. Let's see if it can work. Now. Let's go over the amount, radius, detail, and masking. Amount, basically it's saying, all right, well, sharpening just deals with dark areas and light areas and the differences between them to be able to increase contrast. So we want to make our dark areas darker, our light areas lighter, and the amount specifies just how much. If you drag it to the right, it starts adding sharpening. If you drag it all the way to the right into the red area, it adds a ton of sharpening. So take a look. I'm going to go ahead and step off that a little bit and bring it into my 123 area. That looks good. Now watch this. I can turn this off. This is before, after, before, after. I can do that all night. I'm not going to. Now, take a look at radius. What radius says is, let's go ahead and find those areas that we wind up having that are dark and light. And it says, Let's go ahead and take that sharpening effect and how far off those areas do you want it to be able to go? More often than not, a radius of one will work well. If you have high resolution images, you might want to bump that up a little bit to get more of an effect. If you don't, keep it at one. Now, detail. How much detail do you want? If you drag to the right, more detail. If you drag to the left, not so much detail. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this all the way over here. But take a look at what happens. My eyes are pretty sharp, but so is all of this area by the skin. So I wanted the eyes, but I didn't want this. So what am I going to do now? Masking helps out a ton. What this does is it applies a layer mask directly on this image on the fly. So no jump into Photoshop to be able to do these kinds of sharpenings and then copy another layer and then do a layer mask and paint in. Now we can do that all right here. Take a look. If I wind up grabbing this, what it does is it looks for surface areas and it'll mask those so that the sharpening isn't applied to it. So if I drag it over to the right, notice what's happening to the skin. Skin gets smooth again because it's doing a mask, but the eyes stay sharp. Very good. Take a look if I turn this off. That was before. Keep your eye on the eye. Turn it on. Sharp. Not sharp. 
chart. So here's another cool tip though. If you hold on the Option key or the Alt key on PC and click on the masking area, it shows you this very, very scary picture. That scary picture is the actual mask. So you can actually see what it is that you're doing. Notice that if I wind up dragging this in to the right, it starts making surface areas darker and darker and darker. So now you have the forehead, you have the cheek, you have the bridge of the nose. That area seems to be pretty dark, but the eye stays white. So now we have that good sharp image. Both eyes look pretty good. Now, instead of turning this off and on to be able to see what this looks like, I'm going to go ahead and use my before and after. Take a look right here. The YY shows me a before and after view. If I click on that, there's the before on the left. There's the after on the right. Noticeable difference. If you click on the YY again, it can show you a kind of a split screen. Notice if you're sitting on the left, it's before. This is after on the right. So you can see that looks really good. That doesn't. That looks good. That doesn't. That looks good. Anyway, you get the point. I click on this again. It shows me a top down. It shows me a split screen top to bottom. So you can really notice the changes. I'm pretty much done with that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back to my loop view. And I'll go ahead and I'll fit the image back on the screen. So now we can take a look at what the image looked like before. I'm going to get and collapse this panel so we can have more space. There's the before image. There's the after. Now it's ready for exporting. All done within Lightroom 1.1.